everyone, this is Charles from the Detroit Children's Museum. Thank you for joining us for another virtual field trip made by the Detroit Children's Museum of the Detroit Public Schools Community District. I'm standing here on the beautiful Belle Isle, the northeastern end of Belle Isle, and I'm in front of the William Livingstone Memorial Lighthouse. It's only one of two lighthouses in the country that are, was erected to uh, memorialize someone or something. We'll show you the other one that happens to be in this area later. William Livingstone was a banker. He was president of the Detroit Dime Bank. And two very notable things he did in his lifetime. He was responsible for getting the funds together to construct one of the suit locks. And he also was very instrumental in getting canals in Detroit River deepened so that ships from Lake St. Clair just over in that direction through the Detroit River on its way to Lake Erie, these ships with a deepened canal would be able to navigate much easier. They wouldn't get stuck in the muddy, mucky bottom of the Detroit River. Now I'd like to read to you a story about lighthouses. You may not know now, but you will soon learn that lighthouses are used all over the world and they're thousands of years old. The book's entitled Beacons of Light, Lighthouses, by Gail Gibbons. Waves thrash and winds swirl, tossing a ship about in the darkness. Then, in the distance, a light appears. It flashes three times, disappears, then flashes again. On board, the ship's crew recognizes that this is a lighthouse signal. It is telling them to veer away from something hidden beneath the water. The captain locates a rocky ledge on his chart and uses the light signal to plot their position. Oceans and lakes have always been dangerous for sailors. Storms and howling winds can carry a ship up on a sandbar or smash it to bits against a rocky coast. Lighthouses help guide ships and boats safely from one place to another. They warn of dangerous rocks and ledges, hidden points of land, sandbars, and narrow entrances to harbors. The first guiding lights were huge bonfires that burned brightly from the tops of hills. In some places, sailors watched for landmarks such as volcanoes glowing in the night. For thousands of years, light signals didn't change very much. When lighthouses were built, they were often stone towers with fires burning at the top. The first lighthouse in North America was the Boston Light, built in 1716. From Little Brewster Island, it guided sailing vessels in and out of Boston Harbor. Over the next hundred years, many more lighthouses were built. Most were round and narrowed off at the top to resist wind and stormy seas. The light was placed high to be seen at a distance. These early lighthouses used wick lamps as a source of light, burning whale oil or fish oil for fuel. The lighthouse keepers learned to increase the lamp's brightness by placing reflectors behind them. In 1782, a Swiss scientist, Ami Argand, developed a brighter lamp. It had a circular wick. When whale oil became scarce, colza, a form of vegetable oil, lard from animal fat, and later, kerosene were used. At that time, signals from lighthouses were visible only a few miles, even on a clear night. Then, in 1822, the first modern lighthouse lens was invented by a Frenchman named Augustin Fresnel, who found a way to increase the light by using prisms. The prisms of the lens bent the light beam and concentrated it, making the light visible for many miles. In 1841, the Fresnel lens was installed for the first time in a lighthouse in the United States. Its beam could be seen 20 miles away at night. 
The top of a lighthouse is like a giant lantern. Usually, a winding staircase goes to the top. Years ago, the lighthouse keeper made many trips up and down the stairs, doing chores. The burned lamp wick had to be trimmed or adjusted and cut off to keep the lamp from smoking. Lighthouse keepers were sometimes called wick trimmers or wickies. Lighthouse keepers and their families were kept busy cleaning and polishing the lenses, shining all the brass in the lighthouse, and cleaning soot off the tower windows. The keeper's house stood near or was attached to the base of the lighthouse. Sometimes the keeper lived right inside the lighthouse. Often, there were a number of other structures around the lighthouse, called outbuildings. Everything in and around the lighthouse was kept tidy. All of these buildings had to be maintained and frequently painted. It was hard work. Some lighthouses were built on remote islands or isolated spits of land. Many lighthouse keepers led lonely lives without company for weeks at a time. During storms, their work could be very dangerous. Great waves would crash against the coast and strong winds would blow. Sometimes there were disasters, shipwrecks, the lighthouse keeper would have to help rescue and shelter poor souls who had been cast adrift in the sea. Today, lighthouses are powered by electricity. Each lighthouse has its own identifying signal called its characteristic. There are several kinds of lighthouse signals. A light that shines all the time is called a fixed light. A flashing light has periods of darkness longer than its periods of light. A group flashing light gives off two or more flashes uh, at regular intervals. All lighthouse lights are white, red, green, or a combination of these three colors. After sighting and timing the flashes of a lighthouse, a ship's captain refers to a light list. From this list, the captain can determine what lighthouse is in view and can then figure the ship's location from looking at the charts. During daylight hours, a particular lighthouse can be identified by its distinctive shape or painted pattern. When heavy fog settles in, lighthouses are difficult to see. For a time, cannons were used to warn ships and boats away from danger in a fog. Shots were fired each hour Later, lighthouse keepers rang bells, and sometimes guns, sirens, or whistles were used as danger signals. Today, at many lighthouse sites, foghorns give off warnings. Each foghorn has its own special sound and number of blasts. The diaphone, one of the best foghorns, uses compressed air to give off two tones, a high-pitched screech and a low grunt. The high sound can be heard for seven miles. The low tone travels farther. Lighthouses also use radio beacons to send warning signals. Lighthouses come in many different sizes and shapes. Each was built to fit its own individual requirements and location. Some of the newer lighthouses stand on stilts and hardly look like lighthouses at all. Now there are very few lighthouse keepers needed. Some lights stay on all the time. Others go on and off automatically. They are maintained by the Coast Guard. Although they have changed over the years, lighthouses are still beacons of light to guide and warn of danger and to remind us of the past. Flash, flash, flash. The first lighthouses were towers built about 2,000 years ago the pharaohs at Alexandria in Egypt and the Colossus at Rhodes, an island off of Greece. In the United States, there are about 500 operating lighthouses. The one I showed you that memorializes William Livingstone in the introduction to this video is one of the oldest lighthouses in Michigan. It's also the only lighthouse in the country erected with Georgia marble. They had to use such stone to make sure that in this position by the Detroit River, that this lighthouse could shelter the weather. 
For many years, lighthouses were used as floating lighthouses. None of these are in use today. Many years ago, a woman named Ida Lewis was the keeper of the Lime Rock Lighthouse in Rhode Island. During her lifetime, she saved the lives of more than a dozen people while on duty. At Owl's Head Light in Maine, a famous dog, Spot, used to ring the bell when fog settled in. In the last century, a girl named Abby Burgess kept the lights burning during a storm at Mountinicus Rock Lighthouse off the coast of Maine. The storm blew up while her father was away from the island getting supplies. She tended the lights by four weeks all by herself. The first electrified lighthouse was the Statue of Liberty, erected in 1886. And the tallest lighthouse is a 348-foot high tower in Yokohama, Japan. Mr. Bogart and I are going to show you a scale model lighthouse, a working lighthouse. We're here on the Riverwalk in the heart of Detroit near the Aretha Franklin Amphitheater. This is the Millican State Park Lighthouse, the first and only urban state park in Michigan and one that you can travel to with your family. The Millican Lighthouse is a small scale copy of the Tawas Point Lighthouse located in East Tawas, Michigan, just south of Oscoda, Michigan. You can see it here. The interesting fact about these two lighthouses, and they're both working lighthouses, is that they are the only Victorian style lighthouses on the Great Lakes. Now we travel about 20 minutes south of Detroit to River Rouge, where we find the Bellinger Park Lighthouse. Built in 2003, it is a functioning memorial to sailors lost at sea. Michigan has the most lighthouses in the country with 124 working lighthouses. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the story about the beautiful lighthouses around the country and of course, Michigan. Please join us for another virtual field trip from the Detroit Children's Museum. And I hope you get to have your own adventure soon. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.